nowadays, traditionally nuts were included. Yes. Nowadays, I just put a tiny dab of PVA, just just because the trouble with them not being glued in is if, if someone takes off all the strings, it can fall out and get yes, lost. Yes, indeed. Yes, I can see it ra uh, rising. Aha! Uh -huh. Right. Pop that in the jam jar. The jam jar. I must photograph the jam jar. So important. The, the quality of the light while you're doing that will make the finished video like a Caravaggio painting. <laughs> 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 so there's some little darkness and bright bits where your hands were doing the, um, the, the dressing of the foot. Okay, there's just a few here where we'll just touch them up slightly. It's um it's interesting, if you have a little puddle of it, it it barely seems to dry at all. As soon as soon as it's in contact with the dust, it's dried. Oh right. And um you can also get a a, a spray that forces it to set. Oh yes. And um, there are tricksy things you can do using that, which but I've never uh, above the body. Um, which is something Nick Benjamin said was all right. If you see what I mean? Yes. Um, I don't do that nowadays. I try to get them dead right the whole way through. Um, but it's very, very common on. on most guitars, I mean, and certainly on older, older guitars, it just to um, the very end of the fingerboard. Yes. I think I, I, it's one of these things. People always did it, and I did it for a while. And then you think about it and think it makes no sense at all. Mm. And it must be almost in recognition of the fact that very, very few people get up to those frets. <laughs> Um, yes. So let's get them out of the way and have them not causing trouble. It, uh, I mean, in this case, we're talking fraction of a millimeter. So yeah. And the, the board is dead flat up to the body. Excellent. So you're, uh, so, so, so. Oh, there it is, right. clean fretboard edges. And just just bring the edge of that that fret up to the, the, the camera for a close up again. 
Let's have a look. I can sit. Oh yes. Ah yes, got it. That's very clever indeed, isn't it? That's good. Take a triangular file across each other. Oh, right, right. It just puts a little chamfer on each edge. Yes. Which makes it easier to get Refrets are different. Mm -hmm. I'd say the fact that it's not going right in makes me wonder whether bit of a uh, bit of guck in there of some kind and I missed mm. although you know I pulled pulled the um yeah, the saw so, went through it several times. Yeah absolutely. So what these are that's gonna actually push the fret in. It's got a oh, groove I see. where the fret goes oh, yes. and it's straight. Uh-huh. So um the um All these tools were built up over time as you found it, as you found that you needed one, then you acquired yeah. it. Yeah, and there are a few jobs, and fretting is one of them, where over the years I've changed my mind several times about how to do it. Mm. And, uh, I mean, this is a perfectly good way to do it, but takes much, much longer yes, of course. than hammering, so... Uh... Good. So, I think, just have another little sole across these. I mean, for a start, if you're doing this, you still have to hammer them. Just yeah, of course, yeah, absolutely, place, yeah, sure, yeah. So, so they're 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 all they're all hammered in, and the ends have been and and the um, the ends have been done with super glue, 
and cut off and then the little gaps filled up with black guck um, which is in fact black super glue which is Is there a particular file used for that? Any special file or just an ordinary flat, flat bastard or whatever they're called? It, it has a safe edge. Oh, right. So I'm less likely to hack into bits that ah, I don't I want see. to do. But yes. otherwise it's... Um, no, and it's... Um, Files of increasing fineness. Ah, uh, yeah, there. I have to say, I couldn't tell you the technical description of either of those, but one, the one's coarser, one's finer. Mm, of course. I was thinking uh, last night. It's actually it's quite a brutal job, refretting, isn't it? It's there's a, there's a fair amount of banging and uh, uh, scratching and yeah, wrenching. Definitely. Yes, yes. yes. But, uh, anyway, right. Let's start on the other side. sort of fl flat rockers to test the um, the level of the frets. Aha! So I guess you can, these, these are not perfect by any means. In fact, that, that one I hammered quite a bit more and it's still not. Mm -hmm. so, well, it but, seems, um, you know, seems it's, reasonable, it's not, it's not yes. No, no. But, it um, I'll, uh, This is brutal. Oh yes, yes, I've seen those before. But, um, Stuart McDonald's. That's what Stu Mac. Good old Stu Mac. Got to be the business. Yes. Well. Some people put so, pe uh, ink on the on the frets, don't, don't they? But yeah, you've got yeah. but you've got the natural colour of the wire anyway to tell you really where it is. Just want to have touched every one. Cr Crimson guitars make these long bars with uh, yeah. stuff on. I know. I am. Um, I'm not sure I really see the point. No, but, um, no. It's not as if necks are perfectly straight anyway. There's a, always a little bit of neck relief. Yes, um, of course. And, um, They've all been touched by pretty well the same amount. That steam act thing is seriously coarse. See that that one I've taken rather more off than the other. That's clearly been oh, yes. excessively high, mm. which um, I didn't spot. But uh, anyway, we can now. Uh, Presumably, the process is more complicated with a curved fretboard. At least that's flat, so it 
Is, <coughs> is that easier or is it, it make no, no, no it difference? It always feels easier on a curved board. Does it? Oh, uh, right. It, um, by the time you're at this stage, the curve has all been taken account of. Yes, you know, yes, of just, course. You're just rocking slightly. But, um, right, so now... Files coarse and fine for just getting the crown on the fret. Oh yes, so yes. Mostly this will just be run across. Are they hollow inside those little files? Yeah, I thought so. Yes, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Mm. I have to say the gold looks very nice. I, I think I think it's a good look. It yes. looks very nice indeed. It's one bit where the flat's easier is when you get over the body, because the reason I've got the sticky tape oh, it's on to, the end it's of the file protect, is that it's when, to when the you're body. rocking yes, over yes. the body on the curved frets, it, um, it might catch. Yeah. It might catch. So what I actually do, I don't know whether this makes sense, but I then alternate. I just make sure they're still flat on top. Yes. That one is still needs a bit. Um. Right, and then the finer file. Right, so that's getting towards where we want to be. Looking good. Um, so what I've taken to do, well, you clearly want to just make sure you can still feel slight rough edges there. So what I have started doing is using my crowning file to... Oh yes. Some of these take a flat file and go at, at an angle on each side of the fret, don't they? The Traditionally, you do the whole thing of a triangular file that That's has it. had the corners ground off, mm. so that you don't dig into the fretboard. Yes. Um, um, you know, the the, um, the concave files are a good labour saving. Yes. And then it doesn't apply when you're onto the body, which is just as well, because you'd be quite <laughs> rather difficult to do. So now, make sure there really is nothing. Oh, this bench is getting messy. <laughs> but, uh, well, it's, a, it's a working bench. Well, yeah, but if you can't find something, all you can do is pick things up and put them where they live until you <laughs> find them. What I'm looking for is the scalpel. Oh, yes, the famous scalpel. It's there, I can see it. Down there. Yes. So there's just a few of these where there's little bits of glue or. Muck of some kind have. Where was it? There was one. It was at the other side. Is that it? That's. Looking at it from a different 
different direction you see frets that you haven't noticed before. So. Fret end thing. It, it's ri ri Richard rates it very highly. Yes, it's quite important. I think there's nothing worse than feeling uncomfortable when you're running your yeah. fingers up and down the fretboard. Still slightly. Right. That looks good. That's, uh, so now it looks it's very steel, nice. The steel wool time. Oh yeah, steel wool. I've got I've got some of that. Supposed to wear a mask, aren't you, for steel wool? Because little bits can come off and yes, get in I, your lungs. I, I don't myself. I've got to say, if I've used it. Ah, so you use lemon oil and steel wool at the same time. Ah, I see. The lemon oil will then help to keep the um, the dust from the wool off or down, won't it? Presumably. I hope it's true. Yes. Well, there's a video on YouTube about. Um, in fact, there are two, two videos that reference an Arpia about, about D'Angelico and D'Aquisto, who were um, art shop guitar makers in New York. I mean, the art shop guitar Yes, indeed. Makers. And um, in both of them, there's pictures of them spraying their instruments without any visible protection or extraction or anything, just holding the guitar. And um, they both died young. Yes, <laughs> I can imagine. It's, uh, I mean, you have a special spray booths now, don't you? All sorts of things. I often find that frets still could feel a little scratchy. So I now have them. Um, this is very boring, but these, these come from Shirt McDonald's and they're like erasers. Oh, rubbers. oh I see, they're really, really, really smooth. Impregnated with. Um, from 180 up to 1,000 grit. Wow. So I just use them to give a final polish to the frets. And there we go. Whoops. Oh, that's, that's the full 180, set. 400, 600, 800, 1,000. So doing every fret with one of these is very <laughs> tedious, but this is what they'll do. Yes, I must say, in, in the other videos that I've seen on, on YouTube of this process, I haven't often seen those being used. They're, they're very, very, very fine, fine, fine um, finish. Some do and some don't, apparently. I just find, however hard I go out with steel wool, that it's, you can, you know, if you really think about it, it still can feel slightly scratchy. Yes, of course. Um, it also depends. I mean, a, a, a fresh fret, you know, a, a, a brand new board, usually I, the frets go in so evenly that they require very, very minimal treatment anyway. Oh, of course. So, I don't know if this isn't. Do you find it soothing to do this? Is it kind of peaceful and I, relaxing? I find these things quite. I don't. I don't mind the um, the, the tedium. <laughs> no. Um, no, there's something very pleasant about doing just sort of proceeding through a process on your own. Final, the final rub. Well, actually, after this, I still finish off with the very, very finest steel wool. Oh, really? Because um, th these, they don't mark the fingerboard, but they leave it um, a bit scuffed. Oh, know? do they? I see. When this is done, is it worth at any stage putting a bit of something on the on the top of the guitar on the face just to brighten it a bit? Because it's. Bashed it and 
Well, it looks okay, I suppose, but. Oh. Uh, yeah, we've got that scratch plate on there now. Yes, so, that's a great help. Let's um, do that because I was actually, the neck, the finish on the neck is a bit worn. Mm. So, and I'm actually also going to just do a bit to this. Oh, right. Actually, I do these slightly differently now. Oh, really? So in, what, in what way? Um, I cut the longer grooves here, mm -hmm. which increases the string angle of the saddle. Ah, right. Which is one of these things is generally felt to be important. Yes. I'm not sure I hear any difference, but I do it. And then I just slightly countersink the peg holes, in, all in the interests of the same. Uh, ah. So we'll do that in a moment. But let's just get a bit of the super, super, super fine stuff. Just to get the ebony looking nice. And while I'm at it, let's just have a look down the edges of the fingerboard because this is the, the finish that goes on there. That's good. It's, it's a bit like taking a prize poodle to a dog parlour, isn't it? From sort of shampoo and, and <laughs> it's all puffed up at the end. And Fortunately, I think you're quite wrong there. <laughs> so, couldn't imagine anything more um, revolting. If I was a tenor guitar, I'd feel like a patient in a dentist chair who oh, watches out of the corner of his eye the next instrument that's being, yeah, <laughs> being brought out. Tell me if you can hear any difference, but yes, you know, I, I, uh, I I doubt it. But you know, it's just one of these. Just when I was doing the wet and dry. That's right, yeah, so, it splashed yeah. a bit. Right. Spit. Yep. <laughs> as long as you're not suffering from bagpipers' lung. Indeed. Nasty business. I mean, d death is definitely beyond um, beyond the call of duty. 
I like Julian's uh, reply to that, where he yeah. says that he had an essence of Harvey's to protect himself, <laughs> and now he's trying out the various Breton beers, and would report back later, which I think is a jolly good idea. <laughs> Right, so what I was just thinking this might be... I'm just going to give this a lick of something else. Just to... So you buy this stuff, micro-mesh abrasive, which looks an awful lot like a pot scourer. And but it's a lot finer. In fact, it's a pot scourer. <laughs> Well, having my tenor guitar yep. buffed up with a pot scarab, that, the, that says a lot about it, doesn't and it? The micro mesh abrasive you can get in several different, you can get it coarse and fine and all points in between. And pot scarabs, of course, come in green and white, <laughs> green, green scratchy and white non scratchy. So, really, I fail to. Um, <laughs> Available from your local branch of Lidl. Indeed. It's a bit like the Japanese sauce. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there we go. Right. Or Chinese watches. I'm no longer distributed in the UK. I'm not quite sure what I'll do when this is gone. But what's uh, what's Bellin? Is it a they're, polish? They're, they're the maker of finishes. I see. And I've been using their lacquer for a long time. I've, I've got a good supply of the lacquer. A wipe on water base urethane. Mm -hmm. There we go for retouching finishes. Uh -huh. Right, this stuff is dry to touch within seconds. And, um, in fact, it's more like applying French polish and mm. you just, just go off as you do it. So it's um so no no serious playing for a while. It's a shame of blotchiness on this, huh? Yes, it's it's not it's not me scuffing it I hope. No, I don't think it is. Um Walnut is very open grained and I think the filler, the wood that has more filler in it is reacting differently to ultraviolet ah, light over the years. I see. I, it's, that, that's my guess, mm, you mm, know. Mm, but, so it makes sense. Um, sorry. That's okay. No, it makes sense. I'm going to leave things around with their tops off because sooner or later it will get knocked over. over. Oh, that sounds nice. Lovely, very nice indeed. Very good. It's actually got a slightly different feel to it because of the, of the new fret, so it's just ever so slightly different. It's nice, but uh... oh, it sounds good though, doesn't it? Interesting. 
I'm sure it's I'm, actually increasing volume. Well, there are people who claim frets make a difference. I find it hard to believe, but um, it, um, certainly it's, cer it's certainly sounding very good. It's lovely. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Thank you Lovely. Very much. That's great.